Um, we've got a lot more trajectory information on the screen right now, so you can continue to follow along as Dragon makes its way back toward its splashdown site, um, which again, just in case you're joining us a little bit later in the program, today we are splashing down off the coast of California instead of off the East Coast, which is what you've probably typically seen. Dragon SpaceX, comm check. SpaceX Dragon, we have you loud and clear. How me? We have you the same. We see a healthy flight computer. Expect automated shoot deployment. Dragon copy. A GPS has converged. Expect nominal altitude for drogue shoot deploy. Dragon copy. <sighs> Awesome. As you heard there, we have confirmation that we have come out of the blackout period and established comms back with the Prom 2 crew as they're making their way back down to Earth. And we are expecting those drogue parachutes to deploy here. Sounds like it's uh, on time and at the expected altitude uh, in just about a minute or so. Yeah, which is all great news. Um, we heard a lot of good confirmation from Mission Control back to Dragon. Um, so again, those drogue shoots are, are special in that they are smaller and lighter than our main... Good brace for drogues. Good. Copy, brace for drogues. You can see on your screen that the seats are rotating in preparation for a splashdown, and the crew is bracing for the drogue parachutes. They're going to feel uh, maybe a little bit of a jolt as it, the vehicle is going to slow down very quickly. And this is such an incredible view that we're seeing of Dragon because of the daytime views that we're getting here. This looks amazing. <laughs> So just ahead of the call out for drogue shoot deployment, Dragon will autonomously save the propulsion system on board and then deploy those drogue parachutes, which we just see on your screen right now. I can't get over these <laughs> views today. Um, and of course, right now... Visual on two healthy drogues. Good news there for mission control. Copy, we see the same, two healthy drogues. Um, and good response from our crew. <laughs> This is a view on board Dragon, looking at the droves. I'm six Dragon, crew brace for mains. Copy, brace for mains. We are expecting the main parachutes to deploy here in under a minute or so. So, oh, right. Wow. Yeah, those are amazing. <laughs> right now, those rogue shoots are doing that initial slowdown um, and it looks like we're getting views here of main parachute deploy. We see visual on four healthy mains. Six Dragon, we see the same, four healthy mains. <laughs> and you can see that the main parachutes have deployed. They are expanding. Once they're fully expanded, they are going to slow the vehicle down all the way it's about 16 miles per hour, right in time for splashing down into the Pacific Ocean today. <laughs> right now, Dragon has saved all propulsion systems on board. 1, Copy, 1,000 meters. Dragon right now is also terminating, terminating the nitrox suit and cabin purges and is beginning to increase pressure in preparation for landing. And additionally, the mission control team here in Hawthorne is reporting the precise landing coordinates to the recovery team so that they know exactly where... 800. Where the... Copy, 800. Exactly where they're expected to touch down. And you are hearing those call-outs. We are confirming the altitude as the vehicle makes its way uh, back down to Earth. And of course, uh, now that we've had confirmation of both drogue and main parachute deployment with these great views of our crews <laughs> inside Dragon on your screen now, um, our next major milestone is Splashdown. Yeah, very excited with these awesome views that we're getting. 600. 600 meters. Landing in water is simpler, therefore more reliable, and it provides more margin against unlikely parachute issues. Now we had to learn how to make Dragon waterproof, but once you do, 
it's a uh, rinse, review, and reuse. <laughs> Four hundred. Copy four hundred. You're just now joining us. Crew racing for splashdown. You are watching the From Two crew make their way back down to Earth and <laughs> amazing daytime views. I love that we got the opportunity to do this. You could see Dragon and two hundred. Copy 200 meters and braced for splashdown. Inside of that Dragon capsule are the four from two crew members about to splash down here in just a few, few seconds. Welcome home from two. We have confirmation of splashdown of the Dragon spacecraft. Dragon has returned home with the from two crew. The SpaceX recovery ship and team have been waiting for Dragon splashdown and they will now start making their way to the splashdown location. Our teams have been ready and waiting for this return about three nautical miles away. So it's going to take them about 30 minutes to make their way to Dragon. That was incredible. Stable one. <laughs> Copy, stable one. We see main shoots cut. On behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. Great confirmation there from our mission control team that we've seen main chutes cut. Um, we do that to make sure that those main uh, parachutes, once the capsule is safely back in the water, uh, don't pick up any wind or drag the capsule. Um, as we have our three recovery vessels, the main Shannon uh, recovery vessel and those two fast boats on their way out to greet our crew. System safety verifications are in progress. We'll report back when recovery personnel are in route. And we've mentioned this before, but as you can see on the recovery vessel, there is a helicopter pad there. And that was what Marissa was standing on when we were talking with her earlier through Starlink. Um, but the crew will be lifted on uh, to the ship on the capsule. They'll, they'll exit um, in a great view there uh, of the nest that the capsule will be lifted and set onto. Um, and once they complete some medical checks, uh, they will actually get on a helicopter that will land on that helicopter pad on top of the ship uh, and take them back to land a little bit faster than being on the ship. Dragon SpaceX, rigging complete, approximately five minutes until capsule lift. Dragon copy, five minutes until capsule lift. Request to bring cameras back on board. The From 2 crew inside of the Dragon capsule being lifted out of the water will be gently placed on that Dragon nest that you see there. These views are awesome. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> That's so awesome to see them so connected with each other and excited, holding hands uh, as they, you know, are completing the final steps of their mission, which is not quite over yet. Uh, exiting the capsule is a part of their research. Uh, so they've got one more step to go before this mission is complete. 
Right now, we're just standing by for that hatch opening so that our crew can exit, which you're hearing us use the word egress. So egress the capsule um, and get underway with medical checks uh, and following up with additional research, uh, research, of course, seeing their families. There's that hatch open. <laughs> A great view of our From 2 crew just before they exit the spacecraft. <laughs> And they look very excited. <laughs> they do look really happy. <laughs> yeah. I think it would be hard not to be coming back from like the first polar mission, people you've known a long time, worked with before. Uh, this is a really exciting mission. Rabia Roga was our mission pilot for the From 2 crew. Who is the first to get up out of her seats and exit the spacecraft? This is a really big shift for our astronauts. And there, there she is. She is <laughs> standing and very happy and excited. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> awesome. Mission pilot Rabia Roga of the From 2 crew. <laughs> and there's Eric Phillips standing tall. <laughs> All smiles exiting Dragon. This is great. <laughs> and there she goes. Yannicka Mickelson. <laughs> very, very <laughs> excited. <laughs> And Mission Commander <laughs> Chun Wang <laughs> has now exited the spacecraft. <laughs> 